You know, Ross, I don't have children, but from the parents that I do talk to that have college-age kids, a lot of the children of this sort of generation, the millennials, some of them, um, feel that, what's the use? You know, similar <laughs> to this, the flower children of the 60s, you know, like, why fight against this system that they've seen maybe fail their parents in some sense? You know, why even bother to get a job and have student loan debt? What would you tell someone, let's suppose there's a very creative youth, maybe a little defiant, um, that, that feels like they want to change the world, they want to tell stories, but hey, I don't want to have to do it this way. I don't want to have to go through the system and, and I, I'm just going to go out there and I'll be the next Robert Rodriguez and I'll be fine. Uh, I think you can be fine. I don't think you have to go to film school to, to be a filmmaker. I didn't go to film school. I would venture to say that most people in the film business did not go to film school. They followed a variety of paths in their lives. Uh, that said, I also think there is value to the college experience. I, I think you, it's a time when you mature as a person. But if you really don't want to go to college when you're 18, don't. Go get a job and then see what, see what that life is like and, how, and you'll have those experiences and, and maybe you'll be better off uh, going to college down the line or maybe you won't find college fits with your life, life at all. I think there are a lot of choices uh, on ways to go there. But, uh, and I almost, I almost go the other way, and I, te I teach at a university, and it's a private university, and it's expensive and so on. And sometimes I find myself saying to, there's so much competition to get into a specific school. I have to go to this place. Uh, you see it not just in film school, but my son has to go to Yale, or this a kid thinks I have to go to Berkeley or Stanford or something like that. And sometimes I, I think they take on so much debt to go to particular private schools that it may not be the right move for them there. And I, and I, think, I think there are a lot of paths to success. And uh, certainly Stephen Jobs uh, found a non-college path to success for himself there, or he went for a short while to a school and got some things out of it there. I mean, he, in, his, in the book about him, and he's talked about this in interviews, he, his favorite class in college was calligraphy. And it really influenced him in choosing fonts when they developed the Macintosh computer. And so you get all kinds of things out of college that you don't necessarily perceive at the time as vocational training. Um, and I'm a big advocate for people who want to be storytellers to um, read, <laughs> whether you do that through college and taking other courses or just on your own, that's important. But you do not have to go to film school to get into the film business and you do not have to go to college to, to be successful. Um, there are certain jobs where you do need a college degree. If you want to try and get into uh, the Director's Guild training program, if you want to try and get into one of the studio training programs, they're going to require a college degree. Uh, but there are many, many paths to success. Well, let's say, so suppose someone does want to go to college, then maybe that opportunity isn't waiting for them, but they want to make films. What's just, you know, what get a DSLR camera, start uploading content to YouTube? What are some of the things that you tell people that they can do and also some DIY tips? That they can yeah, I, I think those things are all possible there. But, you know, and I give this tip to my students as well as to, to non-students there. If you're looking for the highest percentage way to try and find work in the film industry, learn how to edit or learn how to do post-production sound because there's such a huge need for people to be skilled at those tasks. And uh, everybody wants to be the director or, or the writer, but if you can have a real bona fide skill, and it's not just a button pushing job, they're genuinely creative jobs, people who are sound designers and people who are editors, you're gonna find entry level work. They're not gonna hire you to be the editor on the next Hobbit film or something like that, but there's so much production of web series, of reality shows, of everything you can imagine, industrial films and so on, that they need skilled, competent editors that you can find a way to pay the bills and be learning more and more about your craft uh, every day. Uh, we had a student who was an excellent editor at, at uh, Chapman uh, some years ago who did not get her ideal job coming right out of school. She, as she so elegantly described it, spent a, a year blurring out boobs and balls on for some sort of reality show. But then, because she was getting better and better at it, she became the assistant editor on CSI, on the Las Vegas CSI series, and did that for three or four seasons, and now is you know, a bona fide working professional and so on. And it's because she had a genuine skill that she could um, vend out there in the world.